All right, let's do some examples of this. We're going to take the volume by the washer method. It's example four. Okay, now here I'm going to look at the region is bounded by these graphs. Is bounded by these graphs where f of x is equal to the square root of x and g of x is equal to x squared and these are between that n looks weird over there x is 0 to 1 all right and so it's between that x is 0 and x is 1, all right? And so we are charged with what is the volume of the solid that results when r is revolved about the x-axis. So we want the volume when we are revolved about the x-axis. Okay. So let's do it right now. Now, this is a pretty easy graph. So we're actually going to graph this um, whenever I'm looking at this. And that's the other reason why we are on this grid paper here, because I think it just makes it easier to look at sometimes. So I'm going from 0 to 1, but I'm going to take this out. 1, 2, 3, back to 4, just because that way we can see it. So this is a 1, and this is a 1. Because we know between 0 and 1, if I have the square root of x, then I'm coming out here, it's going to look like this and go on. If I have x squared, it's going to come up here like this. And we've got that, right? So it's going to be something like that that we're looking at. And this little fella here is going to be revolved around that x-axis that we have. Okay, so here's a much nicer graph. So you can see what it is we're doing. <laughs> but I also think it's worth us looking at our own graph. For crying out loud, we've got this. We can see what's going on here. I'm going to change this back to green. Just because I like it. So here, I'm looking at this square root of x and x squared, right? Square root of x, x squared. And so my region here is this. So if I take this... I'm having this whole part if I take the integral there of just the x squared. Then if I have y equals x squared, I'm taking this as my region when I take the integral of that, right? Because it's to the x-axis. That's why I'm taking the full minus the red so that what I have left over is what's between. And that's what we're doing right now. Okay. So here we go. We are going to integrate find this volume, we are going to integrate from 0 to 1 of pi, and then I have my outside, the one farthest away from my x-axis, right? The biggest um, radius that we're looking for there is going to be x to the 1 half, and I'm squaring that. I'm going to make this a square bracket. Minus the inside one here is going to be x squared, and we square that. Everything is in terms of x. That's a big deal, because we're going to talk about that here in just a more minute. dx, this is in terms of x, this is in terms of x, and my values are all, my bounds here are all in terms of x. Everything is in terms of x. Remember how I said that was important? It's going to get ready to be more important here momentarily. But for now, just notice everything is in terms of x. And you know I don't want to mess with that pi, so I'm going to chuck that thing out front. So here I have my volume is equal to pi, and I'm integrating from 0 to 1. Power to a power. Oops, that's not what I wanted. I want this. Power to a power, you multiply, so that's just x, right? So I now have x minus x to the fourth dx. They're not like terms, but I can super easily integrate that. It's just a polynomial. So my volume here is pi. And then if I integrate that, I now have 1 half x squared 
minus 1 fifth x to the fifth, and I'm going to take that from 0 to 1. And here we go. Fundamental theorem of calculus. I have 1 half times 1 squared, 1 fifth times 1 to the fifth, minus, and both of these are 0, you see that right? 1 half times 0 squared, 1 fifth times 0 to the fifth. I just want to make sure you understand that then this obviously this obviously goes to 0 this obviously goes to 0 so I'm not really concerned about that oops those are times 1 so volume is equal to pi times a 1 half minus 1 fifth if you get that common denominator your volume is equal to pi times 5 tenths and 2 tenths, so my volume is equal to 3 pi over 10. Do you see that? Okay, not too bad, right? What, then you integrate, and we can see that this is it. Now, the big deal when it comes to these kinds of problems, you have to pay attention. What is farthest away from my x-axis, that's my outer part, so you get these set up correctly. It's subtraction. That's not commutative. It makes an impact. Which one comes first and which one comes second, so pay attention. The one farthest away from that axis goes first, minus the one closest to that axis, because you're taking the full here and subtracting off this part so that you have what's left over in the middle. All right? Okay.